Welcome guys. Welcome to another episode of Direct Talks with ICICI Direct. We are doing this after a long time and today we have Abhijit Fatak sir, fondly known as AP with us on this edition of Direct Talks. Abhijit sir, welcome to Direct Talks. It's an honor to host you. You, my pleasure. Yeah. So, uh, viewers, before moving ahead, Aage Jane Se Pehle, Abhijit sir is the first person to introduce technical analysis in options chart, you will technical analysis on stocks. Ke sunarega, but wohi technical analysis technique ko sir ne options chart pe dala hai and which is giving a beautiful, uh, which gives a beautiful uh, result compared to the normal uh, options ke upar jo trade pe percentages of profit ke. So he'll, he'll be te- telling us about that. A brief introduction about Abhijit sir is he is a core member of Define Edge, Opstra. If you don't Define Edge, you will know definitely Opstra. And today he'll be talking about point and figure charts. I'm giving this stage Abhijit sir. Ko de rahun. AP sir, it's all up to you. It's all yours. You can start with what you're experiencing today. Yeah, thank you, Gaurav. Uh, just to give a b- brief history of how it all started. Uh, uh, this is something which I've been doing for more than 15 years now. And uh, in those days, there used to be, in fact, there was no, no data provided for real-time FNO charts. Uh, I mean, I used to use Army Broker and uh, it used to be only cash charts that to EOD, uh, which had to be downloaded every day. And uh, then somehow, uh, I think it was in 2008 when someone started uh, providing that data. And that is when I realized that if I uh, apply some studies on options, which is not necessarily all technical studies because all might not work, but one thing I definitely saw that even if you follow the chart closely of at least the uh, add the money call and add the money put, there is something more which is visible on that chart, which maybe the under chart of the underlying might not uh, indicate. And uh, slowly, uh, I also started developing more studies on uh, open interest. Uh, there also, I realized that there are lots of things which are going under going on under the surface. Uh, which are not visible to the naked eye in terms of open interest, build up of open interest on call side, put side, and uh, where it should be bullish, where it should be bearish. So all those studies uh, led to a systematic way of uh, looking at the market and uh, the results were really good. So that's why uh, I took them forward. And those days I used to observe it on candlestick charts and uh, candlestick charts have a small problem because uh, sometimes when, let's say an instrument goes sideways, you cannot use moving averages on that because then the moving average will go flat or it maybe even start uh, going down. So moving average will be a problem and there is less sub- objectivity in a candlestick chart. And that's when I got in, uh, got, I mean, joined hand with Define Edge, which was in 2016. And after that, we have carried this study much for much ahead. In fact, it is way ahead than what I started with uh, in 2008, 2009. And all this was because of the point and figure charts, because they are much more objective and cleaner to look at. In fact, one thing I must say that they are boring to look at, because like, unlike a candlestick chart, where constantly something is changing on the screen, on a point and figure chart, uh, majority of the times, hardly anything changes, and then that becomes boring, but boring is good. I mean, for a good trading uh, setup, uh, it should be boring. You should realize that uh, a Flickering screen will not give you money. It is a setup which will give money. And on a point and figure chart, what I realized was the objectivity is so good that you can, even before a setup is uh, ready, we know at what price, rather above what price it will be triggered. And when it triggers, what will be the stop loss, you know, those kind of things. So that's barely uh, just uh, for trading uh, naked options. Then I also developed further studies on straddles and strangles. So there also, because a lot of people, uh, again, like uh, everyone knows, straddles and strangles are non-directional strategies. Option long is mainly a directional strategy where necessarily you need momentum. And everyone knows that momentum in the market is maybe hardly 30 to 40% of the time. And if there is no momentum, uh, you lose on a long option. So <laughs> during that phase, uh, straddles and strangles are, of very, uh, are very useful to capture that sideways phase. And then I also realized that uh, looking at the straddles and strangle charts, one can find out whether the market is going to be sideways or uh, uh, trending. Uh, I mean, the underlying. So I have posted so many examples on Twitter over the last, uh, God knows, maybe 10 years that, uh, in fact, I have a big folder uh, in which I have saved all those charts. I have all close to 4,000 charts which I have saved and uh, I, I keep revisiting them, revisiting them from time to time just to see 
how things have changed and honestly speaking nothing has changed as far as the chart reading is concerned and why this study started in the first place traditionally i mean it's a very age old theory that options uh, you need uh, to know greeks that is what the uh, majority of people who enter the field of options do in fact opstra is built on the basis of greeks and greeks is definitely the way to look at options but uh, i mean there is no denying the fact that it is good but i found it a bit complicated to learn number one because it is not easy to learn greeks within a few months sometimes even couple of years are not enough and i see a lot of newcomers over the last 3 uh, 4 years who suddenly start talking about delta gamma theta whereas uh, they sort of uh, fumble when it comes to getting when it gets more complicated and uh, because of that i found that it is a bit subjective for me which is i'm talking about uh, 15 years back so that subjectivity was something which uh, i didn't like because what i realized was even if you take a trade based on the greeks uh, like a payoff chart and that trade is if you hold it till expiry but then between then that date and the expiry lot of things change in terms of market in terms of volatility in terms of trend so many things change because of which the greeks changes and then even if many times i have seen that let's say a payoff graph shows uh, just as an example that you will make a maximum loss of 2000 rupees in that strategy if you hold it till expiry that last part is something which people forget if you hold it till expiry that is the maximum loss what happens in between is sometimes because of the market volatility that loss might be uh, when i say loss i am talking about m to m it is not at book but it is a loss on the on your terminal it might be 4000 rupees and then people start complaining this payoff graph is wrong that is not the case that payoff is if you hold it till expiry there is something called a t plus zero line which people tend to ignore and that is what is really tells you whether you are uh, in profit or in loss and then maybe if you hold it till expiry you might end up in profit who knows but then it all depends on the market and the uh, the payoff chart only tells you if you hold it till expiry this will be your maximum or minimum loss this will be your uh, possible profit and what is the probability of profit but in when i when it comes to charts what i realized was since i get a objective entry there is a objective stop loss and i believe to exit in a stop loss another thing which i found uh, challenging uh, when trading on the basis of greeks was uh, even if let's say a trade is going against you a lot of people start uh, adjusting it managing the trade and my biggest problem was in fact i see that problem in a lot of new people also because i keep getting messages that i had this triangle and now i have changed this uh, adjusted this and then what happens is they are making loss in the main trade and after the adjustment they start making loss in the adjustment itself which means they were not really sure or they were not aware of what is the adjustment which is required so that is another subjectivity because first of all in on many occasions you need more capital and on every single occasion you need to know really well what is the adjustment you have to do otherwise you will end up making a loss in the main trade as well as the adjusted trade whereas in this case the, the chart which i follow i have a exit as simple as that once it gives a exit it is like a stop loss just get out and look for another trade the third problem which i found in adjusting is when you are fighting against in fact a lot of people call it fire fighting uh when you start fighting your trade again with the market then you lose focus on everything else that is the only thing which is visible to you and you are constantly thinking of that single trade when i say constantly i mean uh, depend on how active a trader you are but then you cannot think of any other trade because that negative uh, m to m is playing on your mind and you want to come out of that trade in profit because again uh, stop loss is something which no one likes naturally but a trader should definitely love a stop loss because that gives you an exit and that makes your mind free of that uh, burden to think of the next trade and if you don't do that then you keep fighting against the market and this adjustment that adjustment if you are good at it of course no by all means you can do that i i know a lot of traders who trade based on greeks who are very good in uh, adjustments also because it is very unlikely that whatever payoff graph you have plotted at the start of the trade goes smoothly till the end that is uh, i mean you have to be very lucky every time to do that so whenever it goes against you you need to know exactly what you need to adjust so if you are a bit unsure of that 
that is where my uh, i found uh, confidence in my charts where even for a straddle there is a stop loss even for a strangle there is a stop loss even for naked uh, long or short there is a stop loss so exit that and look for the next trade so that is how i have been uh, going about it absolutely sir so this add to what you said like last expiry which happened on wednesday uh, we opened like the 920 straddle is a very common term in the yes. market people usually sell that so somebody would have sold that 920 straddle 17050 ka straddle becha hoga to market went down to 176940 right so there was adjustment because very difficult wahan pe adjust kar rahe ho and at the time we by the time it was 233 nifty was about 17100 and eventually closed at 17,080. So, if right. you hold it in the morning, if you hold it it just takes away everything. So, for that, I think yeah. what you are trying to say, if you get the entry properly, mil rahi hai, so you should take that in because uh, even I have seen in my circle that people lost a lot of money last Wednesday because of this whipsaw that happened of 100 yeah. months. So, sir, you have told point and figure. Pe, sir, bata diya. Ek question I will ask you, sir, that before you move there, Option charts on which time frame do you look at? Because it is based on expiry and we do not have a lot of data like stocks. So 15 minutes or 5 minutes or like what is your idea? Uh, there are two things. If one is following a candlestick chart and uh, you're talking about expiry, uh, I'm talking about expiry day, then you have to go to the uh, minimum 5 minute chart on a regular day, even 15 minutes is okay. But this is only on candlesticks. That is something which uh, you have to keep in mind because if it comes to point and figure charts, which I'll explain shortly, uh, people will be surprised. Some will be shocked to know, uh, but that is what it is for the last uh, seven, eight years. And uh, the lowest time frame, which is a one minute chart, because uh, once I explain the construction, people will understand that time frame is one minute and not only for options, it is even for positional futures for anything. You get uh, very good entries and exits so because it, the chart, the basis of the chart is not a time frame. The basis of the chart is the box size, which I'll explain. Because once you decide the box size, you can increase it and make it more noise free. What point and figure charts do is they make the chart noiseless. So, like I said, they become objective. <coughs> so, if like once they become, sorry, yeah, sorry, like a Haikanashi. Similar to Haikanashi, but yeah, in Haikanashi, uh, you can call it similar, but uh, point and figure charts are cleaner. Uh, Haikanashi comes closest to it in terms of uh, noiseless. So once you have a noiseless chart and once you have decided what, what should be the box size, <clears throat> the easiest thing is to do is to take the minimum possible time frame because that will give the lowest impact cost. And that is always one minute. Uh, all the charts which I'll show today will be of one minute time frame. And uh, this is completely different than a one minute chart on a candlestick pattern, can candlestick chart. Okay. Uh, you should not confuse between the two. Candlestick chart might be five minutes, 15 minutes, because that is based on the time. Whereas one and figure chart is based on the price. And once it is based on the price, you must have the lowest time frame possible as the, uh, since it gives the lowest impact cost. Okay. So, sir, I think with apne ekdam iska introduction, diya, let us understand what point and figure charts are. Viewers, I hope you are ready to learn this from AP, sir. All yours, sir. Okay, I'll share the screen now. Okay, this is a usual disclaimer because a uh, lot of people, uh, after attending a webinar or a YouTube video, they think that they have mastered everything. So, I always caution that uh, you must observe anything which you learn for at least a few weeks before actually entering into any trade based on that because there are other i mean if it was so rosy everyone would have become a billionaire you know? <laughs> so it's not the case uh whatever observations i have <laughs> said uh, i'm showing are based on what i have studied over the last 15 years and that also keeps changing in fact i keep learning something new almost every few months there is something always new to learn in the market so you have to keep an open mind and uh, nothing there is no holy grail as as simple as that yeah, you make profits only on Twitter, sir. Regular profits yeah. are only made on Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> let's not get into that. Uh, so, like I said, uh, looks very easy in hindsight, but tough to implement during live market because uh, the biggest thing I want to say is even if it is a point and figure chart where I've said that they are noiseless, the chart is noiseless, but is your mind noiseless? That is impossible to control and uh, not impossible, it is difficult to control and it is going to be different from person to person. Someone is following someone on Twitter, For someone is in 10 different WhatsApp groups, someone is in 10 different Telegram channels, someone has is watching TV and uh, 
what the chat says and what someone on twitter says or what some whatsapp group says might be completely different so it's all about your conviction and uh, making your mind noise free if you follow too many things too many uh, media then definitely your mind is going to be completely full of noise so that you have to be very sure that if you are going to follow one theory based on charts or whatever study just follow it and not listen to anyone else in fact it is tough uh, especially for newcomers who have got used to the uh, social media and whatsapp and telegram it is tough because if they have followed someone maybe for a few months they think he knows everything but there is no one who knows everything as simple as that so how is it different than conventional like i said uh, in options when you plot a payoff graph uh, for the greeks or whatever uh, strategy you have that shows what will happen to that trade if you hold it till expiry right it doesn't show what it what will happen on day 5 because then there will be some more variables like iv and uh, i mean trend you know there are other things like i said so it all depends on what if you hold this till expiry then what will happen to this trade whether you will make a profit or whether you will make a loss and how much and there people uh, tend to make a mistake that in between also maybe it shows you will make only a loss of 500 rupees but <clears throat> in between it says a loss of 1500 rupees so you have to be sure that you will follow it till expiry so this is like a buy and hold or a trade and hold which is the true for fundamental analysis whereas what i do is based on option charts like i said earlier also it gives a entry with the stop loss and if the stop loss is hit just exit no matter what is happening to that payoff graph till expiry you can always re enter even if let's say there is a spike in uh, the market for whatever reasons uh, and you exit that trade if you keep following it maybe it gives a re entry and uh, one thing which lot of people are uh, not uh, in fact it is again a mental thing once they get hit in a uh, uh, i mean once they exit a trade because of a stop loss they don't look at re entry whereas the simplest thing in the world is the uh, one thing which people should keep in mind is re entry is just a brokerage away if you understand the uh, meaning of this as long as the setup is meeting your standard i mean your uh, setup uh, whatever the chart is meeting your setup again why not re enter there has there might be i have been a whipsaw you have to exit but if it gives a re entry there is no no one is going to shoot you if you don't uh, i mean if you re enter right there is no ban on re entry in fact it is the easiest thing lot of people say stop loss to hit hone ke liye hota hai mera stop loss hit ho gaya aur wo upar chala gaya but that doesn't mean you should not use the stop loss you should use the stop loss and if it again meets your uh, entry criteria by all means enter again so that is the <coughs> uh, for me it's a benefit which the charts give so i'll just introduce uh, very briefly what are point and figure charts <coughs> what in <coughs> what is in front of you is a standard candlestick chart where there are price uh, where the chart moves horizontally there is a price on the y axis and time on the x axis that time can be of 5 minutes 15 minutes hourly daily weekly whatever and the uh, as time moves a fresh candle is plotted horizontally so if if this is the candle on monday this will be the candle on tuesday this will be the candle on wednesday so it moves horizontally and it all depends on where the price is as per the price the candle will be formed so this is a candlestick chart it moves horizontally in a point and figure chart it moves vertically so whenever a price is going up it it uh, is plotted on this uh, column this is one column whenever price is going down this is the next column one thing i must mention here is point and figure chart arguably is the oldest form of charting uh, the first book on point and figure charts was written uh, in fact by that time i'm not sure how many books on candlesticks were written but this is such a old charting method uh, only uh, bad thing which happened was hardly anyone introduced any software to plot those charts because uh, i don't know for what reason <coughs> people concentrated on candlestick and bar charts and line charts but uh, that's why it, it did not get popular that was one reason the other reason was like i said it submit boring unlike candlesticks uh, where uh, constantly something is changing on the screen uh, point and figure charts can be boring so this is the vertical plotting this is just uh, earlier they used to write the uh, price on the sheet maybe it was a graph paper by that time so 109 110 11 12 that that's when the price was going up 
and when the price starts coming down 115 13 12 on a line chart it might look something like this this is just a sort of a rough representation but on a point and figure chart it will look like this quite clean <clears throat> so what happens is on the left hand side then slowly instead of writing the numbers in the column they took the numbers to the y axis and for anything which is going up they started plotting x so a, a column of x is a bullish column a column of o is a bearish column and the biggest thing which people should note is every single column is a swing in itself so this is the upswing this is a downswing this is the next upswing so in this example which i have shown here if you can see <coughs> 1000 1005 1010 1015 20 25 so for every 5 rupees rise a fresh x is plotted so let's say the price starts at 1000 and goes to 1005 one x is plotted then the next x is plotted for example it goes all the way to 1040 even if it goes to 1044.9 this last x will not be plotted because it has not printed 1045 and then if it starts coming down then naturally at 1040 the x is already there so the first x will be plotted at first o will be plotted at 1035 once the price goes up goes down by 5 rupees because in this case the box size is 5 even if the price goes to 1035.1 the first o will not be plotted because unless you see 1035 the o will not get plotted so in effect what it means is between 1035.1 and 1044.9 the noise is entirely removed on a candlestick chart you will get those many candles at between 1035.1 and 1044.1 you will keep getting candlesticks uh, 1 2 3 4 whatever and the market becomes range bound in this case not a single x or o is plotted and the first o is plotted only when you see 1035 and then for every 5 rupees decline it will go down if the price reverses again for the next five points here for 1020 and let's say it starts going up again so 1025 30 and here so this is how the basic point and figure charts are plotted the major difference in what i told right now and what is actually practiced is this was a one box reversal what did what i mean by one box is one box continuation size is five rupees right for every five rupee rise you plot one more x and here I showed that for every 5 rupee decline, you plot another uh, the, the column of O. But here, the first time when the O was plotted was after 5 rupees. Traditionally, what is done, and that is what uh, everyone uses, it, they use a three box reverse to no remove noise even further. So, what it means is, unless the price goes down to three boxes equivalent, the first O will not be plotted. So, which means that after 1040, the price has to come to as low as 1025. Only then these three O's will be plotted. And then continuation is again five points. So, for every five point decline, the first O. So, the box reversal is always here. So, any point and figure chart which you see, first is the box size, second is the reversal. <clears throat> so, that reversal is always three boxes. Very rarely you will find anyone using uh, a different number. It is always three boxes. That is the traditional way it has been used because anything less will be very aggressive. Anything more will be very conservative. So one box, five, let's say this is five box uh, into three. That is the chart which we are uh, right now. What we are looking at is five into one, but traditionally it should be five into three. So the first O will get plotted only when 1025 is printed, right? So this is how. Perfect, sir. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Any questions? No, no, I still perfect. I just said came okay. yeah. So just to give an example, this is a chart of a stock <clears throat> where you see a big column of X in the middle. If you see on the right hand side, there is a low date which is 5th April 2015, high date which is 5th, 15th April 2015, low is 95, high is 110. That is the price. So this is a low price, low date, which means that from 95 to 110, the stock went up sorry uh, from 5th april to 15th april the stock went up from 95 to 110 which is a rise of 15 rupees which is almost uh, maybe 18 20 percent but does that mean that it closed in the positive every single day not at all it might have because what let's say we say this is a one box uh, one percent box into three 
which this only means that there was not a single day when it did not close below 3% negative for that day right every day it did not go by 1% it this is just the swing the reversal which could have come in the form of a column of hope would have been possible only if the stock had closed by negative 3% on that day so even if it had, it had closed by 2.8 percent uh in the red the column of o will not start and then it i mean this column of x continues so that, that this is what when i say noiseless it keeps going up and unless you see a three percent drop on any given day the column of o will not come and when you have a big column like this in fact there is a terminology which we use uh, called anchor column any column which has at least 15 boxes or it can be 15 x or 15 o let's say this is a column of uh, x over here so if we have 15 x's that is called an anchor column so if you want to equate it to a candlestick chart you can call it a bullish engulfing column if you want to see a, a bearish anchor column there has to be at least 15 boxes of o only then it is a bearish anchor column that will be like a bearish engulfing uh, chart. So here the bullish engulfing or the anchor column is very useful because once you have an anchor column on the screen, on the chart, one thing is very clear that there is a strong trend, there is momentum and that don't even think of shorting it. There might be uh, people who look at a top based on some other study, but unless there is a reversal on the screen, <clears throat> there is no point in shorting it. So that's why this uh, conventionally what we use is anchor once you get a defined anchor column then a small retracement and then this next anchor column which is called a double top buy so i'll come to that next this is another example of nifty where uh, of course nifty used to be 7500 at one point of time in 2016 so 11th april to 18th april nifty went up from 7560 to 7910 in one single column over a period of seven days. So you can see this CNT is the count, which is 36 boxes, which means Nifty went up by 360 points, which means that the box size was 10 points. Does it mean that Nifty never closed in the negative? No, there might have been days where Nifty did not uh, definitely close in the negative, but not more than 10 into three, because 10 is the box size, mm -hmm. three is the reversal. So Nifty never yeah. closed in the negative by more than 30 points on that day. 30 points. Yeah, so whenever Nifty, even if it let's take close 25 points minus, this column will continue. That day, there will be no change in, there will be no further X, fine, but there will be no O. So that's why I said it, it becomes boring. But then because of this, because of that, uh, Nifty went up all the way from 7560 to 7910 in a matter of seven days. Absolutely. So all this time I have been talking about uh, absolute box size. 5 rupees, 10 rupees, like that 1 rupee. So yeah. why point and figure charts become even more uh, better is if we use log box values. <clears throat> uh, I mean, all prices, whether it is, uh, I mean, options or stocks, they move in percentages. People don't realize that uh, we, we can't say ye 5 rupees se bada, ye 10 rupees se bada. We have to say kitna percentage bada. Because 1% on Suzlon and 1% on MRF is a huge difference, right? Huge difference. So you can't equate it in terms of number, uh, how much rupees. So that's why absolute uh, is a bit irrelevant. And especially on a point and figure chart on absolute boxes, if you are looking at a chart of Suzlon and if you are looking at a chart of MRF, MRF ka to tick size 5 rupees hoga, uh, jo Suzlon ka price hai. So you cannot have absolutely. that. So that's why log box values are used. What is meant by log box values? Instead of absolute uh, number, it is taken as a percentage. So let's say a stock goes from 100 to 101. That is a rise of 1 rupee. But that is a rise of 1%. So only when it goes up by 1%, the next X is plotted. But after 101, next 1%. So it will be not 102. It will be 102 point something. Yeah. After 102 Sorry. point something, it is not one more rupee. It will be 102 point something in plus 1%. So for every 1%, the next X will be plot. So that is how this log box value works. 
So once you have this basic knowledge of how the charts are plotted, uh, the beauty of point and figure charts is there are some basic patterns which are very useful. Of course, you need to understand what is the box size which should be used, and uh, that is something which uh, I might not be able to explain in this video. But of course, uh, people can always ask me on Twitter or uh, email. So what happens is this is a double top by this is a three column pattern. Let's say you have a first column of X, then a retracement. And then the column of uh, the third column of X in which this X crosses the previous X. Right. So this is a double top by which is a three column pattern. What happens in this is even when this O is getting formed, you know where it will be forming a column of X because you know the column reversal level. Right. For every color O on this chart, you know after which level of the price will the column of X start and once the column of X starts for whatever reasons if you are bullish on the stock if this is just a pullback which you are looking for once the column of X starts you know that beyond this X there will be a double top buy right so either you buy here with this as a stop loss or if you want to be conservative you can always place an order like what they call a stop loss buy order above this and once you buy this once this gets triggered this is a stop loss so the stop loss is very clear in the mind. The entry is very clear in the mind even before you take the trade. And that is the objectivity. So this is how a double top buy can progress. Uh, it goes up further. This is just an example of bank nifty. So this is an anchor column. Uh, I mean, not much to talk about over here. Just to show an example of small columns of O's. And then to be, if this is how bank nifty moves. Everyone knows that. It doesn't move. Uh, small at any given point of time. So the, the next pattern is a double bottom cell. So first was a double top buy, second was a double bottom cell where it is a again three column pattern exactly opposite to the double top buy where in this case the first column is a column of O, then a small retracement and then this column of O, third column where it goes below the previous one. So if you are bearish on this stock, even when this column of X is being plotted, you know that O will start at what level? That will be the reversal level. And either you enter here or you know that below this it is definitely a confirmation. So, and this will be the stop loss. So, this is a double bottom cell. I, another example of the same bank entry chart where a series of double bottom cells, the red horizontal lines are the double bottom cells. Another pattern, uh, we are talking only about four patterns, uh, not many. Uh, this is more powerful than a double top buy. You will realize once I show the chart. Double top buy was a three column pattern, but triple top buy is a five column pattern. <clears throat> you have a column of X, then a column of O, another column of X which does not go above, another column of O. <coughs> Sorry. And this was because there was supply on this stock at these levels. But then at lower levels, buying was happening. Maybe over here, the supply got exhausted or the buying was more. And because of which, this crosses the previous two X. This and this at the same in the same column. <clears throat> so that's why this is a five column pattern. And I mean, this is simple common sense that a five column pattern, which is a triple top buy, will be definitely more powerful than a double top buy. As simple as that. So this is how it will look on a line chart. Triple bottom cell again, similar to uh, exactly opposite to triple top buy. A five column pattern where a column of O, then a retracement of X, another column of O at the same level does not give a double top, double bottom cell. Another column of X, and then the column of O where the selling becomes uh, intense and it breaks the previous two <coughs> O's. So this is again more powerful than a double bottom cell. This is just an example of uh, Adani power, which used to be 30, 35 once upon a time, where this is a triple bottom cell, this is a triple top buy, just an old example. So based on these patterns, there is another pattern called a turtle breakout. Turtle is something which in like, for example, in triple bottom cell, we had three consecutive column of O's. Sometimes they might be another column of X and let's say the cell happens in the fifth or the tenth column, but at the same level. <clears throat> that is called a turtle breakdown, breakout. So in this case, it will be bearish turtle. In the case of, uh, let's say, triple top buy, instead of the, this column, assume that there are a couple of more columns here and then the breakout happens. So that is not a triple top buy, but it is a turtle breakout, which will be a turtle bullish breakout. 
So double top buy, triple top buy, turtle bullish are the three bullish patterns. In fact, you need not uh, look at double top buy much. And double bottom sell, triple bottom sell, and turtle breakout bearish. So these are the three, uh, six main patterns which need to be looked at, and uh, you are all set to go. So I'll just give some examples of some charts from uh, last year, last month expiry, uh, March. So this is just a caution that you need uh, real time charts. Even if you are looking at those charts at the end of the day, they have to be real time because you have to plot intraday charts. So again, you can trade long options or short options uh, based on whatever your temperament and capital and pocket size and risk parameters are. There is nothing like uh, what you should should not do. You can do everything uh, if you have the capital as well as the temperament. So these are some examples of positional trading in options of uh, the month of March. This is the Adani port. So this entire chart is for the month of March. From uh, if you remember, expiry of March started on 24th of February. So this chart you will not see any date, but these are one minute charts. So if you see here one M, that is one minute, and it all depends on the box size. So here I have used a 3% box size and again this into 3 is common for every chart. So for positional options, you should look at 3% charts, 3% uh, on the option charts. So here you will see there is a turtle breakout. This is not a typical triple bottom, triple top buy. There are many columns in between, but after this, which is above something like 45 or so, it gave a breakout and then it went up. So what happens is <clears throat> once you have this kind of a breakout after a decline, the stop loss becomes extremely objective. But in this case, uh, I, I don't know the exact level here, but it is around 30. You can uh, guess it from the Y axis. So let's say buying about 47 with a stop loss of 30. That was a clear cut objective trade for the Adani port 550 call. And after that, you have to just trail it with the nearest column of o, the low, which is called a uh, swing low. Swing low is uh, like any swing low on a candlestick chart. And once you have these kind of anchor columns, that this is an anchor column. You can see there are more than 15 boxes. That means the trend is very strong. So here, here, here. Now here what happened, you have an anchor column. But one thing which you must have is, like I said earlier, just an anchor column is not enough. You need a follow through after the anchor column. For example, here you had anchor column. Then you had the follow through after five, six columns. Whereas here, after the anchor column, the price started coming down. So this was the final exit on the chart, right? So this is Adani port 550 call. Then this is the Infi 1500. Sir, a, sir, can you come back to Adani one second? Yeah. I'll just ask you one. Because you said anchor column gives you a big momentum. It's like a momentum column which yeah. comes in. Uh, so no, just, just, just to, uh, well, let me clarify. Just to equate it in terms of percentage, what is an anchor column? It is minimum 15 boxes, right? And we have defined that in this case, box size is 3%. So, which yeah. means 15 into 3, so 45%. Yeah. Yeah, as simple as that. Exactly, 45%. So, sir, uh, you said ki stop loss, you anchor column, hai, we need a follow through anchor column. So, that may come in, like, wo pata nahi kab it may come in 3, 4, or multiple. So, someone who is who's going for a bigger time frame, the pure expiry run. Karna hai. So, instead of keeping a stop loss near that O's where you have kept a stop loss, can somebody trail it to the low of anchor column and then ride yes, that? In fact, uh, anchor, the low of the anchor column is a very good stop loss. So in this case, for example, if someone wants to trail it, so this will be the low over here will be the stop loss, the trailing stop loss. Then the low over here will be the next trailing stop loss. Then the low over here will be the next trailing stop loss. Uh, because the fact that anchor column means there is strength and the fact yeah. that that low is breaking, that means it is getting weak. So as simple as that. So this this can what you said is a one way of uh, trading strategy which people do uh, having the low of the anchor column as the stop loss. You're right. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So the next example is in fee fifteen hundred put. So this is another three percent chart. Right from the beginning of uh, March expiry, in fee was weak, and here you can see it gave a turtle breakout over here, which was above ten or twelve. And then there were a couple of anchor columns. So you use that anchor column as a stop loss, like you said. Maybe you get an exit here, but this is where I was talking about re-entry. So market is not going to go in your direction every single day. So you get an exit here, which is in profit, but you again get a triple top buy here. So enter again. So once 
see the that is the something which i have seen of course even i have gone through it everyone goes through it once you realize that you are getting stopped out in a put that doesn't mean that the stock is getting strong and i should immediately look at the call there can be a sideways phase and this is where the greeks come into picture this was nothing but a sideways phase in the stock because of which the put lost value and this is exactly where i come from when i said objectivity because when it goes sideways the put will start losing value and if you keep holding who knows it might be a reversal but in this case it was not a reversal it was just a pause but still you had an exit in the put and that's why re entry is important and then it went all the way over here so this is in fee 1500 put similarly you can do intraday trading in options this was the couple of examples which i showed was uh, positional trades where uh, see again different traders have different uh, temperaments some don't want intraday because they think intraday is like a t20 match but even a t20 match can be entertaining so and there is no harm in tra trading intraday if you have some objective setups and uh, there there can be objective setups possible on uh, options charts just couple of examples <laughs> this is a 17200 put on 23rd march so if you see here since morning now here uh, one logical question which people will ask is what are these green and orange lines which are horizontal lines <clears throat> they are nothing but camellia levels camellia is a very age old study in fact uh, the, the first camellia levels were uh, developed in the year 1989 by i think nick scott in fact i have a video on uh, youtube uh, based on how to trade camellia levels so the green lines are support lines the red lines orange lines are resistance they are very popular for intraday traders <clears throat> so they give you exact levels where uh, you can uh, look for supports or resistances and these camellia levels are based on the previous days range for that instrument so th that's why they remain constant throughout the day so this dotted line vertical dotted line till this vertical dotted line is 23rd march one single day and those lines remain Uh, the same from the start to the finish so here you have a total breakout above something like 125 127 and <clears throat> after that just trail it and uh, as long as you can trail it because the trailing when you say trailing <clears throat> it is much easier said than done so as per your risk appetite you have to trail it the best way i would recommend is always by minimum two lots let's say you buy this at uh, 125 <clears throat> and your stop loss is 100 so your risk is 25 right so once you buy two lots exit one on a rise of 25 points which is 1r that is the standard terminology 1r is the move in your favor which is equivalent to the initial risk so let's say from 125 it goes to 150 and once you exit one lot that means your trade will become uh, risk free even if it hits the stop loss of course you are not going to hold till this stop loss but even if for some reason market suddenly turns very fast and even before you realize it comes but this trade will remain risk free and once you book uh, make this trade risk free you are much more relaxed in your mind to trade the next next one that's why it is always better to the easiest thing for people who find it difficult to trail what they should do is partial booking and for partial booking naturally you have to buy at least two lots a lot of people trade in one lot so that is not going to help so this is 70200 put of 23rd march this is 17100 put on 28th march uh, in fact just uh, the day before expiry market was weak and if in fact this is the use of candle levels it defines support levels see in the morning it market i think gapped up or maybe went up uh, this is put so it went down took support exactly at the camellia level then there was a bullish anchor column then this follow through which is also a total breakout so here this was a buy if someone wants to be aggressive because of uh, some other theory which he has on nifty resistance this support was the best time to buy if he has that nifty resistance in mind definitely nifty must have turned down from some resistance uh, i don't have the nifty level here but even if you don't want to be aggressive this is a safer way to buy it and then trail so this is 70100 put on 28 march this is 16900 call on 29 march expiry day where in fact you mentioned that market went down initially 
this was this went up then went down in fact a very big bearish angle call up on the call and see where it has taken support on the candle level which was near uh, 60 64 or something and immediately after the candle there is a turtle breakout so here you had the lowest risk possible. If you keep in, in mind looking at Twitter, looking at WhatsApp, Mono, as to Sola Hazard Cheso Anevala, as to Sola Hazard Arso break Honevala, then you will never buy this. But if you look at the risk over here, it was not even 15 points. In fact, I would say I don't have the exact figures, but it was definitely less than 15 points. And once you have a risk on an intraday option for expiry day of less than 15 points. You can't have a better risk in your life at all. And then you see yeah. where it went all the way. Of course, here again it hit the camera. So these are the partial booking levels. Again, another turtle breakout. So this anchor column low, like you said, becomes a stop loss. And then another entry. So this is, and if you're an intraday trader who sits in front of the screen from 9.15 to 3.30, you have two, three trading opportunities. Or if you are a content trader, just one trade is enough, 30, 40 points will yeah, That is also possible. So it depends again on your uh, temperament and how busy a trader you are. At the same That's time, what I also scalper suppose, as well. Yeah, sorry. I said this looks for good for a scalper as well because yeah, he gets a multiple <laughs> opportunity to enter yeah. and exit. Another thing which I always highlight is when you are looking at the chart of a call, option call, you must have the put chart of the same strike price, which is at the money. It should always be at the money. In front of you. So when you see this put chart, around the time the call took the support, this stopped here, broke the, uh, in other words, the call chart and the put chart should be mirror image of each other, as simple as that. So if you, I'll just go back one slide, just keep this chart in yeah. mind and this chart. This is exactly this took support here, this took resistance here, and then this yeah. was coming down. So the fact that this was coming on very fast meant the market is no longer bearish. As simple as that, because the right. put is falling fast. Well, no. So one thing yeah. which this remo removes from your mind is don't look for bearish trades. As simple as that. Mm. Whether or not you mm. buy the call is a different matter altogether. But at least don't look for bearish trades because this is also extremely important. The chart first tells you what you should not do. Then it tells you what you yeah. should do. So that is important because here, if you have that bearish bias, Sola Ajar, Atsu, Bukhne Wala, Sola Cheso, a lot of people are talking about 16,600 expiry on uh, Thursday uh, morning. But this said, no, no, uh, I am not going down. If I, uh, sorry, I am not going up. This is a put chart. So there is a hmm. selling happening. And this, uh, in fact, this anchor column, this break of anchor column was a clear cut sign that there is uh, bullishness in the market. So yeah. first is what you should not do. That's why you should always have both the charts in front of you. Okay. Now, any questions on these are positional and intraday uh, naked options. Uh, of course, you can. Uh, another way of looking at it is just to give an example. If someone is an options seller, this Camrilla support which broke and then this next double bottom sell was a very good selling opportunity with this as the stop loss. Right. So, even if you're an options seller, you can use the same charts. But in the case of buying, it was a call which was bought. In the case of selling, it was a put which was sold. So whether you are intraday or positional options, buyer or seller, these charts can work. For intraday, you should use 1% box size. For positional, you should use 3% box size. So these are about uh, Sir, naked uh, options. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. One question on naked options. Like yeah. when you're seeing this, uh, ideally you would look at an ATM option, ITM option, or like suppose I, if always, in 17, I, I always say look at ATM on expiry day, look at one strike ITM in the money. Okay. Okay. Because if this you remember money, money on, uh, on uh, Thursday, sorry, not Thursday, Wednesday, on Wednesday. expiry day, Nifty turned slightly below seventeen thousand. I think sixteen nine forty, sixteen nine fifty. Sixteen nine forty was a low. Yeah, sixteen yeah. nine forty. So that's why low. I'm talking about sixteen thousand nine hundred call. This is in the money. Right. Right. Because this was expiry. Day. So on expiry, yeah. So on expiry day, one strike in the money, and non expiry day, at the money option. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. This is for intraday trading. Even for positional, I wouldn't advise too much out of the money. If you have many days, for example, for example, now, today is the first day of the April expiry. If you get a good positional setup, even on, and one thing is very sure, if you get a good chart setup on an add the money option, you will get a similar or maybe the same setup on the out of the money option. They won't be different. 
as long as both are calls or both are puts so it won't be different okay. but you can trade maybe one strike price out of the money for positional if there are lots of days left for expiry okay got it So coming to the next study, which is Tadels and Sangles, this is mainly for non-directional because a lot of people uh, believe that uh, this earns more money, but this is more capital intensive. People must keep it in mind. For a naked uh, buying, let's say you need only ten thousand rupees, but for at least one and a half lakh rupees, at least one lakh capital plus some cushion. So in fact, you should have at least two lakh for one lot, and this is a one side. If you are talking about Tadels and Sangles, it is even more. So Net required is 1.5, 1.4. So you should have uh, maybe two two and a half lakhs uh, at least. In fact, I wouldn't advise even two. I advise you should have at least three or four lakhs for one lot of straddles or strangles, because uh, that is yeah. people uh, look at leverage in a wrong method, uh, wrong manner. What is leverage? If you need 1.5 lakhs for a strategy, it should be compared to what is the value of that underlying. Yeah. So in this case, Nifty is at seventeen thousand, which is eight and a half lakhs. So that is the leverage you are talking about. Not, अरे मेरा डेढ़ लाख है, मेरा दो लाख में चल जाएगा. What if Nifty opens at lower circuit tomorrow? Are you okay? You know, so that kind of uh, brief calculation one has to do. Need to have that exactly. Yeah. And uh, calculation of eight point five lakhs is in two fifty. That is the Nifty lot size. So seventeen thousand into fifty is eight point five lakhs. Viewers in the yeah. share confusion. Who are you? Yeah. The, yeah. Value of Nifty. In fact, a uh, lot of new traders will not even know what is the value of a lot. I mean, Nifty is worth eight point five lakhs per lot. That yeah. is something which people don't That's realize. Nice. So what are straddles and strangles? Straddles are the call and the put of the same underlying of the same expiry and of the same strike price. Strangles. Everything is the same except that there are two different strikes. One is out of the money call and one is out of the money put. So this is a, another beautiful way to capture the sideways market. For example, uh, this is the current. Of course, this is now. I am sure this is uh, would have changed today because Nifty went up uh, right since morning. This was saved yesterday on the holiday. So seventeen thousand one hundred April straddle. Now uh, forget those. Uh, Orange column that is uh, an indicator which we brought. It is called a MAST indicator. But the columns are con this rectangle which I have marked, which is five six days back. Every single vertical line is one day, and since the box sizes will be different, these lines will not be equidistant like they are in a candlestick chart. This is another uh, lesson which people should uh, understand that in a point and figure chart, the number of columns will be different because that is based on the price. It is not five minutes or ten minutes. It is only how much how the price has moved. So this was a beautiful turtle break, bearish breakdown below this level. You could have sold with this stop loss, and you can see how much it has come down <clears throat> because uh, Nifty was literally not doing anything in the last three four days of the March expiry. So even if you had traded April end straddle, this is a monthly uh, seventeen thousand one hundred April straddle. So it came down uh, quite nicely. So once you have this kind of structure on a straddle chart, one and you identify a good uh, stop loss, you, uh, these trades are very uh, worth taking because who knows? No one can predict whether the market is going to be sideways or volatile. Or you just have to trail it. As simple as that. Uh, in fact, I have a video on YouTube on straddles, how to trade straddles. So this is just an example. Another example is a strangle. Same. Expiry, which is April end. Again, the chart saved on Thursday, which was a holiday. Now, when I look at strangles, I look at 300 points out of the money call and 300 points out of the money put. So, since Nifty was near 17100 uh, on expiry, 17080, so I have taken 17400 call and 16800 put. Naturally, the total value will be much lesser than a straddle. Straddle will be 400 or so. Strangle will be much lesser. So here again, around the same time, this was a good sell. various turtle breakout over here and it goes down only thing is again i have another video on how to trade strangles when you should shift because uh, here again a lot of people do the mistake of uh, they don't know when to exit and uh, what if nifty suddenly goes to 17600 then the strangle might go in loss so there are where uh, i mean 
based on the this, in fact the trailing stop, if you have taken the trade here the trailing stop loss will be only 280 now so this is already in a profit even if you take the exit if it happens so once it gives you an exit look at the next triangle let's say nifty has moved up by 300 points from where you took the trade you plot the fresh triangle which is 300 points on either side so that is how you can keep trading triangles of course not all triangle trades will enter uh, uh, result in a loss or in a profit because uh, if market suddenly starts trending let's say 300 400 500 points in 2 3 days you will definitely get stopped out but if you go by the conventional theory that markets are trending only for 30 to 40% of the time and they go sideways for 60 to 70% of the time then you will definitely make money on straddles and triangles in the long run you might get stopped out for a couple of times when the trend is in progress or alternatively in fact a lot of people always ask me what happened during covid times now if you look at this chart or even the straddle chart i can assure mm. you because i was observing them and trading them even that time during covid any straddle mm. chart which you mm. take even if it gives a structure like this or co during covid times when nifty used to open down by 200 300 400 points mm. can you guess what would, would mm. have happened on this this would have shot up right so this would have given an exit mm. yeah so there was no way you could have uh, remained in a short straddle or a short strangle during covid time so that period of one and a half months or so from mid february mm. to uh, mid march to end march there was no way you yeah. could have got stop out maybe at 30 40 points or 50 points stop loss or there would not have been an entry at all yes because the prices of those premium were also high so you will get that properly you will get that thing yeah. in that it, it is already priced inside that chart. another thing is that time if you remember wix was rising very fast from all the way from 88 went to 85 so when wix is rising so fast you should not even think of uh, shorting straddles and cycles at the same so this was my next question sorry so sorry this was my next question so you just complete i'll just ask you yeah so in fact there is another old conventional theory that you should not short straddles uh, when wix is so much when wix is so much i don't believe that it all depend on the trend of the wix even when wix stopped out near 85 86 on 24th of march 2020 after that market went uh, sideways for a few days almost 10 days or so but that time the wix mm -hmm. started crashing it came on from mm -hmm. 86 80 75 70 65 very fast so that was again yeah. a good time to look at straddles and triangles that gave because the fact that wix is very high that means the premium are very high how is wix calculated it is the basis of calculation of wix is the monthly nifty options as simple as that people don't a lot of people don't know that so that means the options are very high priced and if wix is coming down that means the panic or the fear in the market is going down and that that's mm -hmm. why the options price start coming down so after 24 25 march uh, again straddles and stra straddles started paying quite well for the next uh, couple of months yeah so my question was that was when wix is i got higher premium so aap agar usko seller kar rahe to it, it is always in favor of sellers yeah, but, but when wix is going wix from... to start coming down yes yeah yeah so that was my but question ki when you do how, this how do yeah, when, you how much do you divide high even 30 was high even 40 was high even 50 was high it just kept on going up till yeah. 86 Yeah, so if do you mix uh, wix uh, suppose to, in today's scenario like nifty is at 17 250 300 and wix is i don't remember the exact value so wix is falling right in this scenario do you, yeah so you implement wix in this or you are like do you are telling one thing when value? wix starts rising rapidly these i will not get this chart structure at all this okay. paddle or triangle will start rising hmm So it will stop. Yeah, exactly. Me out. So it will stop me out. Right. Got it. Yeah. So basically, you just your price takes care of the rising and falling wicks, and that's how the pattern is made, and that's how people can take entry and exit based on. Right. It. Absolutely. Yeah. So these were uh, again, if you if people want an example of a weekly option, this is another example. I, I would strictly avoid uh, insist that you should not trade weekly options, especially the straddles. if you are not used to it or if you are a beginner but i know because i get asked this question many times uh, but this is just an example of how a weekly straddle will look like 
similar to 17,100 monthly. This is weekly of 6th April. This was also going down. But believe me, hmm. I have not seen the start today. Today, Nifty is up by more than 250 points. I'm sure this would have shot up. So if yeah. someone has shot it over here, he would be facing a loss and he would be wondering what I should do to exit. Can I adjust? Can I uh, do some firefighting? You know, then there's a other mind games which start. So that's why, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I would suggest strongly avoid uh, shorting weekly status. Do it on monthly. Or weekly, uh, those 1% okay. intraday longs are okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is at 260 right now. Just say check the price. So this is yeah. 260. Also, uh, this is not a tip. We are about to reach 6th April. So this was just, a, just for an example. No tips, no recommendation of shorting a 17 yeah, These are only current charts yes, which are of yesterday's closing. Today, everything has changed yeah. after the big gap up. So these charts will no longer be valid. Yeah, but because of, because few people would be there to who may end up taking the trade. So for that disclaimer, we are putting in. Yeah, the, uh, I mean, yes, these are yesterday's 30th March uh, closing uh, charts, uh, rather 29th March. I have saved them on yeah. 30th March and uh, today on 31st March, uh, market is very bullish. Uh, even now it is still bullish. So uh, none of these charts will be of the same uh, pattern. They would have definitely become okay. bullish. Absolutely. Yes. So another way of looking at charts, of course, uh, the, uh, we don't have time to explain that because that is a session in itself. Again, conventional hmm. theory of having a uh, hedging. I mean, this is not hedging a portfolio in that sense. I would call it reducing the cost of your portfolio. See, hmm. every, <clears throat> let's say you have a long term uh, portfolio where you have uh, some uh, good FNO stocks, which are liquid in options. That is extremely hmm. important, liquid in options. Not all FNO yeah. stocks are liquid in options. Uh, let's say we talk about only the top 20, 30 stocks. And if you have one lot equivalent in your cash, uh, portfolio. You can use the same option charts to, and if that portfolio is not to be sold, let's say it's a long term portfolio, you can use these charts and sell uh, first out of the money calls when you get a sale on the chart and trail, trail that. That way your cost gets reduced. Uh, in fact, I have done a study historically, you can easily generate two to two and a half percent returns on the covered call, which means every four or maybe five years your cost of the stock becomes zero it becomes free of cost i'm talking about four five years but since your holding was supposed to be long term uh, it's worth doing it yeah like like a reliance or an enforces which yeah, people exactly. tend to hold for a longer period yeah absolutely yeah. so this is all i think we are uh, uh, yeah. nearing the end of the time and uh, i could cover a lot of ground uh, and uh, of course if people have any questions they can ask me on twitter or yeah. my email address is ap at definage.com and uh, you're free to ask any questions yeah so viewers aapko jo bhi question aap comment box mein dal uh, sakte hain ap sir is very active on twitter you can tweet him on uh, twitter as well his handle is in the thumbnail it's ap underscore pune at the rate ap underscore pune is his twitter handle and email id sir ne aapko de diya aur agar hum ek acha view Viewership cross karte hai, we'll try to get AP sir for a second session as well to cover more things in detail on point and chart, point and figure charts. I hope you like this session. Thank you so much. Thank you, AP sir, for being a part of Direct Talks. It was a pleasure hosting you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to never miss an update from ICICI Direct.